Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It's great to be back tonight in Balamalai, and I want to welcome all our guest speakers to the wonderful constituency of North Antrim here tonight. And I want to particularly welcome our adopted Osterman, Ben Habib, who's done so much for this province. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if anyone is in any doubt about the sinister union dismantling nature of the protocol, then consider this simple fact, that under this protocol, the other part of this United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is decreed to be a third or a foreign country. Think of that. Great Britain, under this protocol, is treated as decreed to be a foreign country. And we are decreed to be a part in terms of trade and economics of the European Union. That is why, and that is what the Irish Sea border means. It signifies that when you leave Great Britain to come to Northern Ireland, you are leaving the sovereign territory of the United Kingdom to enter the sovereign territory of the EU at the Port of Larne. That's what it means. And that, of course, is why there are these iniquitous checks on goods. Customs posts signify something very important. They signify that you are indeed moving from one sovereign territory to another. That's why goods are checked, because you're leaving one jurisdiction to come to another. You're leaving from where one country's writ runs to where another jurisdiction has a different writ. And that is what the puts both signify and the checks which are implemented under them. So no one should think for one moment that this protocol has not made fundamental constitutional change. Yes, the protocol is bad for our economy. Yes, it imposes impossible burdens on our industry and our business. But far more dire than the economic consequences are the constitutional consequences of the protocol. And it is that that manifests itself in the fact that Article 6 of our Acts of Union has by this protocol been vanquished, or as the Court of Appeal said, subjugated. What does that mean? Well, what is the union of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland? It is an economic union and it is a political union. The economic union is based on Article 6 of the Acts of Union, which says the basis of this economic union is that all parts of this union shall have the same unfettered trade between and within. What does the protocol do? It fetters that trade. Therefore, it subjugates, it overrides, it vanquishes and removes the protections of Article 6. And once you remove the fundamentals of the economic union, then you have fundamentally assaulted the very existence of the union. And of course, the protocol does much more. I've heard people say, oh, the protocol isn't working. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the protocol is working exactly as designed and intended. It was designed to break up the United Kingdom. It was intended to forge a wedge between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And it is intended to create 
an all Ireland state. How will it do that? Well, the purpose and the, the means by which it hopes to do that is to build an all Ireland economically as a stepping stone towards an all Ireland politically. How does it do that? By creating barriers with GB, by making it difficult to trade with GB, by forcing business to look southward rather than to London and Britain, to force economic, trans uh, economic development north-south, to build an all-Ireland economy in the sure and certain knowledge that it is then a short step from economic unity to political unity. And that is the evil genius and intent of this protocol. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, anyone who calls themselves a unionist can give no sucker, can give no support, can give no time to this protocol, because either we kill the protocol or it will kill the union. And any unionist politician, even any unionist leader who thinks that the union is safe under the protocol is deluded beyond description. This protocol takes a dagger to the very heart of this union and that is its purpose and its intent and will be its outcome if it is not stopped. So I am very clear with you ladies and gentlemen that the primary demand and objective of unionism needs to be not the tinkering, not the ameliorating, not the toning down, but the total removal of this wretched iniquitous protocol. Because either, as I say to you, the protocol goes or the union goes. It is as simple and as stark as that. And so as we go forward in this battle, and this is a battle, a battle like we've never faced before, unionists throughout the century of Northern Ireland have always feared constitutional change. That's what the IRA campaign was all about, murder and mayhem to force constitutional change. But I have to tell you tonight, we have now had constitutional change. And constitutional change is the transfer of sovereignty, of control over a territory. And that's exactly what we see under the protocol. We are now subject to laws we do not make, laws we cannot change, laws that, are, that a foreign court, not our courts, administer. Because the consequence of being in a foreign single market for goods under a foreign customs code and a foreign VAT regime is to put you in foreign jurisdiction and to cause us to be ruled by those foreign laws. That is constitutional change. And the fact that that has happened without consent, without anyone assenting to that, is confirmation of what's already been said here tonight, that the supposed guarantee of consent in the Belfast Agreement is nothing short of a fraud and a deceit. If you can change how your laws are made, if you can hand law-making powers over Northern Ireland to a foreign jurisdiction, transfer sovereignty as a consequence, and you don't have to ask anyone's consent, then the supposed guarantee of consent is fraudulent and deceitful. And that, of course, brings us back to the iniquitous Belfast Agreement, which vaunted the suggestion that nothing could change without consent. Well, we're seeing this union being dismantled day and daily before our eyes by this protocol. And the, the Court of Appeal tells us that doesn't breach the consent that we have. That tells you the principal consent you have is worth nothing. And if that was the supposed guarantee of the Belfast Agreement, 
then it too is worth nothing. Let me finish with this very important point, if I might. It is fundamental to unionism that we do not aid, abet, assist our own destruction. And therefore, it is critically important that unionism under any guise does not implement this union dismantling protocol. And thus I say this to you, if the price of Stormont is to implement the protocol, then it's a price no unionist can pay or ever should have paid. If you can only have Stormont, if you, through your ministries and departments, implement our own destruction of the protocol, implement an Irish sea border that divides and partitions the United Kingdom, then no self-respecting unionist should hold executive office in such a Stormont, because no one should be about the business of dividing our own country up and destroying this union. So I'm very clear, as I've been from day one about this protocol, there is no good protocol. There's nothing sensible about the arrangement. There's no best of both worlds. There's nothing like that. All there is, is the determination of this protocol to dismantle this union. And we, as unionists, must not lay our hand to assisting, to aiding, to abetting that dismantling. And therefore, we need to stand strong. We need to stand firm. If we compromise on this, there'll be nothing left to compromise about. We've given enough. We've nothing more to give. Thank you very much.